Any questions? No questions? All right. So we'll continue where we left off. We, uh, well, that's a little too big. Um, we get to the points that we understood. We can separate the functions. Uh, uh, we talked about functions having uh, point of entry and point of exit. The point of entry is defined through the argument list that we put in a parentheses in front of a function. And the return, we said uh, we can have many points of entry, many things we can pass through the, the argument list, as, much, as many as we want. Of course, it has to be um, kind of makes sense. You cannot put 200 things over it. It doesn't make sense, right? Um, to a certain amount, that is logical. Uh, and you can only return one thing or nothing. You cannot return two things in a function. A function, a C function, is only capable of returning one thing and only one thing, one entity. It cannot, it cannot return an array. Array has many entities. It can't. Okay? It can return one integer. It can return one double. It can return one package of something. We're going to see soon, but that's what it is. You can, you can create a package, and you can put 50 things in a package and return a package. But that package, you don't know how to create it yet. We'll find out. All right? And all the, every single thing that is either passed to a function or it's returned from a function is through copying. So it essentially passes a copy of what you have. Okay? Everything is passed by value, which means the value is copied into something, then it's passed. When you return something out, the value is copied into a temporary variable, then it's returned out. Otherwise, returning would be impossible. We know that every function has a scope of its own. For example, get int that we see over here. We know get int has a scope of its own. Therefore, the integer that is created over here and the character that is over, created over here will die at line 30. As soon as the function is finished, those values die, go away. They go, or in C term, they go out of scope. When a variable goes out of sp scope, it ceases to exist. It will get evaporated, destroyed. If that's the case, then how can I return num? Because num is going to get evaporated, right? How can I return it? Impossible. That's a paradox. You return something that is dying. The only way that you can return it, that is a copy of it, it's returned out. Okay? Always remember that. Or when you are receiving something through a function, for example, this function that we had that returned a horizontal line, we are receiving two values. We are, we are receiving a len as an integer and a ch as a character. The values that are coming in are copies of what is coming from outside. It's not them. It's, the, it's a copy. So if you change the value of ch in here, the value out there won't change <clears throat> because you are changing a copy of it. If length over here you change it, the value out there won't change. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Are we okay with this? He's, you're like, oh my God, what am I? <laughs> you okay? Are we okay? <clears throat> It's just a quick review, OK? <clears throat> so that's how the functions are written. Functions are programs, standalone programs of, the, uh, of their own. The functions can call each other, and that's how you organize your code. You cannot have a big, huge uh, program written and manage everything. Because of that, you break the program into small pieces so you can manage things. You can think about this. The most important key and factor of programming is to be able to only focus on task on hand and forget about everything else. Other than that, you're just going to confuse yourself. The most important talent in programming is that when I create a program over here called HR, who's supposed to print a horizontal line for me, I only have to think of that and nothing else. I shouldn't think what that line is being used, where it's being used. I have its definition. I know it has a length. I know it has a character that is drawn, that is the the character that is drawn with. And that's the only thing. That's my objective. That's how I do it. I'm not going to do anything else. Now, you can have many different implementations to accomplish the same thing. For example, in here, I'm creating an integer, and I'm increasing that integer and getting to length, right? Some person may say, OK, you're wasting uh, an extra integer. You could have done this. Instead of doing that, you could simply write a while loop and say while len.
my objective is have len characters printed, right? And then len minus minus, right? I could have done this. Correct? Because I know zero is a point of stop, right? So if I want it to be two characters, len will be two. Two is zero? No, it comes over here, prints one, reduces it by one, one. Is one zero? No, it prints the second one, comes over here, reduces one by one, it becomes zero. Zero is false, goes out. Same thing. It just counts it backwards. So I saved one integer. Potatoes, potatoes. You can do the same thing in two different ways. It doesn't matter if you're counting. Like if I told you I want five things printed, you could simply say five, four, three, two, one, and stop, right? You can always count backwards. Nobody forces you to count upwards. Your choice. It doesn't matter. Again, you can do the same thing in many, many different ways. Are we okay with this? Yes. Go back to the beginning of the semester when we were talking about truth and falsehood. We said, what is false in C language? Only zero. So when len reaches to zero, mission accomplished. It makes the condition false. And if it's anything but zero, it's considered as true. So a program like this is, is most likely have written by a person who is kind of seasoned in C. The other program with a for loop that starts from zero goes up to len is written in kindergarten version type of a thing because you're just doing it by the book. Like this, the person actually saved four bytes, right? Because I'm not having that integer. It doesn't seem much, but when you're remote, uh, programming a remote control for a, a, a small remote control that has four, 4K of memory, when I say 4K, I don't mean, I mean really 4K, 4,000 bytes of memory. When it's a very small microcomputer that you're programming, the four bytes really counts to something. So again, there's like, or, or you're, if you're programming the keyboard of your computer, these days everything is a supercomputer. You're putting a cell phone in your pocket and it's a supercomputer. I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about very small little computers. That's why it's not much of concern. I used to, 20 years ago, very old, 20 years ago when I was teaching C, I would talk about these things and actually tell them to try to write an efficient program. Make sure that you're not wasting too much memory. You're writing, you make your executable small and so on and so forth. These days, come on. <laughs> four bytes, I have four billion bytes of memory in my hand. Why do I need to save four bytes? But anyways, it's just, it's just a demonstration that you can do the same thing in two different ways. So I'm just going to leave it like this. Um, Um, and you can organize your code in different types of uh, different types of files. For example, in here I wrote I wrote analyze and analyzer funks, which is the functions for analyzer program, right? But when you think about it, what is here for analyzer? The only thing that belongs only to analyze is the title. Flushing the keyboard can be used for any program, right? Writing a, drawing a line, let's call it actually a line, <laughs> that's better. So drawing a line, oh, H, R, line. So drawing a line with length of 31 and with using, it, it can be used in any program, correct? Getting an integer, definitely. These are all, so, if I am really organized, I'm not going to do it like that. I'm going to actually create a new file. I'm going to call it utilities.c. Utilities. Yeah. Things that I use. And I'm going to put the functions that are really utilities in that one. Not in analyzer functions. Analyzer functions, that title only. Which is not bad. It doesn't matter if you actually only have one function in a file. You are being organized. Later on, when you are actually improving your functions, you may want to uh, add more functions to that. But for now, this is the case. All right, so now it's the same thing. It's in a separate file. It still calls and runs and everything. It works perfectly. If I can run it, of course. 
There you go. So it still runs. There is no problem with it. There you go. Right? So um, the only difference is that now it's more organized with respect to, to the functions that I have. Now, the question is that, uh, wait a minute, I have functions in here, line, flush keyboard, get int, and it's going to get more and more. It's utilities, right? You get, it's like a toolbox. You keep adding tools to this toolbox you want to use, and after a while, you simply forget <laughs> how many tool, tools you have in that thing. Every single time I want to use this utilities thingy, I have to go over there and one by one add the the prototypes of the functions that I have in that one so I can use it somewhere else, right? That's, a, that's painful. I need to be able to bring all the prototypes that I have in that utilities.c and include it to my file, add it to my file wherever I want. Why do I have to keep doing it and remember what the functions were there and be able to see which one is... I don't want to do that. Do you know how many things are as a standard input output header file? No, you just include it. And you use the functions one by one. Scan it, print it, later on you're gonna find out put character, get character. You're gonna have lots of different functions that you can get out of there, right? So I wanna do the same thing. Why don't why shouldn't I have all the prototypes separate in another file that I can bring it in whenever I want? And that's exactly what we do. That's what header files are. So essentially, I'm going to create a header file of my own, and I'm going to call it utilities.h. Utilities, yeah, .h. And I'm just going to add the header files that I need in that one. The, sorry, the prototypes that I need. So this is my utilities.c. I'm just going to bring it over here and say I do not want that. I want get int definitely, right? I want flush keyboard, it's already there. I don't want it. And I want the line. Those are my prototypes, right? Now I want to bring that into my program when I'm using it. So instead of having that title is fine because it belongs to the analyzer program, let it be. But now if I want to actually include those things, all I need to say is actually include, but instead of less than and greater than, I put a single code and I'm going to say utilities.h. What does, you, what does the include do? Include, and I'm not talking about any type of metaphor that I want to tell you some example, it, it literally does this. Include copies the content of a file and pastes it where you put include. So it essentially goes into include.h, copies all the contents, and pastes it over here before the file getting compiled. Remember the number sign, the hashtag thingy that I talked about? I said these are the things you're asking the compiler to do before you want to compile your code. Include means please open include.h file, copy the content, and paste it here. And that's it. So I don't need to remember what are the prototypes. I just put it over there. And any time I want to see actually what I have in that utilities.h, instead of going through the mess of the code that I have, I simply look at, oh, I have a flush, I have a get int, and I have a line. Good. Life is good. Are we okay with this? All right? So we are getting organized. Now, when I'm writing this code of mine, what am I doing in here? I am, uh, where is the program thingy? So um, in here, what I'm doing, I am getting marks, correct? I'm getting a student number, and I'm getting a mark. Is that correct? A student number is a number that could be between two numbers. It's a nine-digit number, right? Or it could be starting from zero. So it could be, so when I look, so when I look at student number, a student number could be, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, right? So it could be like this, or it could be as low as 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, as this one, right? No, lower than that. So let's put 999. Nine, nine. Sorry, this. 
Let's talk about mark, not student number. A mark can be between 0 and 100, correct? That's the minimum and maximum acceptable values, right? That's what a mark. So the get int that I have there, can it enforce that? No. So I'm going to go back to my utilities.h and write a wish thingy. I want to have an integer uh, get int. I cannot call it get int. I have to make the name difference. Um, get, get, get what? No, it's not a long int. It's get validated int, right? Long name, but hey, it validates the integer before getting it. So, and I can actually pass integer, what is the minimum max and what is the maximum value to it. So I'm going to tell to get int of mine, this get integer, get validated integer, get an integer, make sure it is between min and max, otherwise don't accept it from the user. Okay, how do I write that program? I'm going to go to my beautiful utilities thingy that I have over here. Let's actually split the window in two so we can see better. So I'm going to come over here. In utilities, I'm going to come right down to here, and I'm going to write the program. OK, my job is to get an integer, correct? And getting that integer, I want to make sure that the integer is between min and max. Otherwise, I'm not going to let the user pass. We've already done that in your temperature thingy, right? And you use scanf with for it. But I'm not going to use scanf over here. I'm going to say int num. Right away, I'm going to say equal to get int. So I'm using the function that I have previously written. So it's going to initialize my, it's going to create my variable and immediately get an integer and put in it. And I know that that can only be an integer because my get int is foolproof. It won't anybody pass by unless they enter a proper integer, right? Now I can check it. Now I have to say while that num of mine is less than min or that num is greater than max, it means it's a bad number, right? Correct? Now I'm going to say printf. Uh, what do I say? Uh, invalid value. Try again. And I'm going to give the user a hint. So percent %d, and I'm going to say your value should be greater than or equal to and less than or equal to percent %d. And I'm going to put the values, min, max. Then I'm going to get the integer again. Do I need to flush the keyboard? No. Get in takes care of that for me already. Now I'm going to say return. Now, see how easy is this program now in th three lines of code? Because I reused my code. I already have an integer get in that gets the, a foolproof integer. Now all I need to do is to write another function that gets an integer. So I, 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 I fix that problem. I have to only make sure that the integer has valid values in it, right? And now that I have this get validated integer, or you can write get valid integer. If that's shorter, get valid integer. Something like that. All right, save it. And now I'll come over here in my program. Do I need to add the prototype to it? No, it's already included. Because it's included, the next time it gets compiled, the new prototype is going to come in. So all I need to do in here, when I'm getting number of marks, how many marks I can get? Maximum of 100, correct? And I'm thinking maybe if you want to go through assessment between marks, at least you have to have five marks, not more than that, less than that, right? So I'm going to say get valid int. And I'm going to pass five and 100. Ta-da. Done. 
So now when they are entering number of marks, if they do 2,000, I know my array doesn't have that much space, I'll stop them. And if it goes less than five, I'm going to say, do it on a paper for heaven's sake. You have five marks, you want me to write a program for it? Okay, so, and now we're going to come for marks. Now I, when I'm getting a mark, the get int has to be between zero and hundred. So I'm going to put zero and hundred. And for the student number, I know student number can be nine digits. So, so smallest one that can exist be, uh, be valid should be uh, eight digits. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the biggest one will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And that's a valid student number now. Now they cannot enter a student number with three digits. Okay, but for testing, because I don't want to, you know, I can put a small value over there so I don't have to type. But anyways, so now uh, the get int is working like that, and this is this. Do I need to check anything else? Let's try and see if the new validation kicks in properly. So I'm going to go control F5, and I'm going to say enter the number of marks for analysis. First, I'm going to put garbage. It's going to say invalid integer, try again. Now I'm going to put three. Now it's going to say invalid value. Try again. Value should be between five and hundred. So any idiot sitting working with this program will find out how to work with it, not to crash the program. Now they can actually put over here, okay, five. Now it accepts. Now it's going to say entry form. Oh, entry format is as follows. Oh, I have to fix that. We don't have an entry format like that. Anyways, so that's from the previous version. We have to fix that. Student number, if I put like this, it won't, oh, it accepted it. One, two, three, huh. We'll find out why. I don't know why it's accepting it. It should be, anyways, we'll find out. Uh, and Mark, I'm going to put, uh, uh, say, 34. We'll find out why it's not working. It's accepting the student number for some reason. I didn't change it? See, that's what I do not like about Visual Studio. It's so forgiving. I do not have a get int that accepts two integer. How did it accept it? See? See, that's the thing. Remember I told you that compilers are not sometimes? That's what I'm talking about. Do I have a get int that accepts two integers? No. You should give me an error for heaven's sake. So that's why. That's why, so see, look at this. I don't have a git into that accepts two integers. But it's running it nicely. Yeah, two integers, who cares? OK, so that's, that's why you are actually running it on matrix to see like problems like this. So thank you very much for, for fixing the thing. So this is get valid. So it was actually using the regular integer thing again, valid again. Thank you very much. Next time, stop me sooner, please. OK. <laughs> All right, so I have good compilers here. So first off, I'm going to make that 5, 3, because I don't want to go too much. okay? And I'm going to make this three digits, because I want to test it, right? It just, and then I'm going to bring it back to the proper values. Uh, so um, you should not have values like this. A good programmer put defined statements for this, so they can modify it later on. okay? So if you are doing so, if, if I should I write it a proper, proper way? Let me actually write it in a proper way. So instead of having 0 and 100 over here, I have to have the find statements that sets this. I have to actually have things like define uh, min, ma min mark. And I'm going to put over there 0 and define max mark. And I'm going to put 100. For the rest, please, you do it. OK, so in here, I'm going to put minimum mark. And in here, I'm going to put max mark. So if later on they tell you, hey, our program is not working that way now, uh, uh, the mark system has changed between, I don't know, 0 and 200, you don't have to go through all the code and find out what it is. You just change the defined statement up there. All right? So again, if I run this program, Seriously, something's wrong with this Visual Studio thing. You have to see. Anyways, please enter the number of marks for analysis. Now I'm going to put over here three. 
Okay, um, student number, I'm going to put 12. Now it says invalid, good. One, two, three. Mark, um, 67, uh, three, four, five. Uh, I'm going to put minus one, invalid value again. So this one's going to put a, a 78. Student number, four, five, six. And the mark, I'm going to put 100. And it looks like it, it, it is working, okay? So now I have uh, a program that is written kind of nicely with these functions, but the functions that are written, uh, still the program is too long in my, in my opinion. Why? Um, there are certain tasks. Uh, enter marks, uh, entry format is as follows. Let's take that out. you can still break this down into pieces. Well, we don't know how. Like, for example, you see this part, the analysis part? So you are asking it to put the information. So, so we could do something like this. Uh, because it's do, using an array, why I am doing the anal analysis while I'm getting the information. I would have separated the two and put them in functions. We don't know how yet, but you can break these thing even smaller piece, in smaller pieces. So you have data entry. So you're going to have a function called data entry. The data entry function's job is to just get the information and put it in the array. And then after that, you're going to have analysis. Analysis receives the array and all its information and finds out just passed, passed, and failed. You don't know how to return three things yet. We'll find out soon. When we do, we'll talk about it. And, and then we're going to have another function called report. And the report is going to print the report for you. So, uh, so and the report is going to have two parts. One part is list numbers, and the second one's going to have analysis report. So as you, when you look at the uh, program, you're going to see pro your main program is only six lines of code. And you can see exactly what the parts and pieces are. We'll do that. This program, we're going to make it small and nice and neat. OK? Any questions down to here? So now we know how the functions receive several things and return only one thing. We know that. We know how to separate our functions in a different file to make it organized. We know how to put the prototypes of the functions inside a header file and include, include the header file instead of having uh, the prototypes written over and over in the functions. We learned how to put the functions in different uh, files depending on uh, what they do. So it's all about organization. This utilities, you can always put it in some kind of a code bank of yours, and anytime you're writing a C program, you bring it in and you continue using it so you don't have to reuse it over and over and over. Are we okay? Are we okay one? Are we okay two? Sold. Packages. How do we create packages of things? OK? When you are looking at this program, you will see that I have marks and I have student number as two parallel arrays. But that's not how it's supposed to be. This individual person is not a mark and a student number. It's one person that has a mark and a student number. And the second person with another, with another mark and a student number. And the third person with another. So we have array of people who have student number and marks. I don't have over here, if I have 10 students, I don't have 20 arms and 10 heads. I have 10 students, each of them have two arms. You follow what I'm saying? We, we are packages of information that we stand in arrays. We don't have parallel arrays for certain things. That's wrong. 
So we need to learn to create packages of information. Packages of information are created in this way. Um, analyzer, OK? <clears throat> Uh, that prg.c that I have in analyzer is wrong. So when I put 0, 1, you all know what I mean, right? Uh, when I put 0, 1, it means 0, 1, analyzer funks and uh, utilities.c, they have to get compiled together. OK? Did I lose all of you? I did? OK. So let me bring it back up. So analyzer, if this is being compiled, this has to get compiled as 0, 1, analyzer, dot, dot, C, analyzer funks, utilities, dot, C, dash, O, analyzer. Because I have three files over here that completes the program, right? So I have to put the three file names. And because I just renamed that to 0, 1, analyzer, I am... Uh, putting that name over there. Are we okay? OK? In the case, the program that we have written, we had a student number and a student, and that student's mark, correct? These are the two things I had, right? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to actually use it. I'm going to say, OK, I have, I want to put those two things together. If you want to put two things together, the name of a record how to create a record of things, how to create a package and put stuff in it, and see it's called a structure, OK? So what should I call the package? I can call it the student, uh, student mark. I think student mark makes sense, right? Because it's a student mark, right? Yeah. So, so yeah, student mark. I don't know. I could say subject mark, but I don't have any subject in there uh, unless, I had a, um, unless I have a subject code over there too, like 144 to put the subject. But nah, forget it. Student mark is fine. So again, as you see, when you're actually designing a package, you have to think, depending on the abstractions that you have, depending on the uh, request that is made for the application that, that will be written, you may have two different packages with the same name that have different things. Like if I have, for example, with respect, with respect to the uh, uh, OSAP, everybody knows what's OSAP, right? Anybody over here who doesn't know what's OSAP? Everybody knows what. So with respect, OSAP is Ontario uh, loan for students. You get a loan, so you, so, and you pay it back with humongous amount of interest after. But that's, uh, OSAP is the loan that you get from the, from the government to study and then pay them back, OK? <clears throat> So with respect to OSAP, a student <clears throat> is a student number, the amount of loan, and GPA average. Because your GPA average dictates that you can get OSAP or not, I think. Does it? You, shouldn't, you can't fail, can you? I don't know. Is it? So if it's not, it's only student number and the loan that you have and the program that you're taking. OK, let's say like this. So, so if I am working in OSAP, a student, for me, what is important from you is uh, probably which semester you're in, okay? Your student number, uh, the amount of loan that you owe, the, student, uh, the, the semester that you're in, and the program that you're in, for example. That's what I need. But if you go with respect of administration, a student is much more than that. It's your student number. It's the courses that you have taken. It's the marks that you have for courses. The average for every semester, all the things that you have. So the package of a student with respect to administration of college and the department of OSAP are two different entities. 
They are both students, but they look at them in a different way. A car for a driver is a different thing for a car for a mechanic. A mechanic wants to fix a car. A driver wants to drive a car. So car for those two people are two different entities. Okay? So that's why I was thinking over here, what should I call it? What should I call it? So how do we do that? I'm going to say struct student mark. And you create a block for it. And you put all the things you want to have, you want a student to have for what you want to do with. Um, say, in our program, what did we want? We wanted the mark of the student and the student number, right? So for student mark in here, I'm going to go and I'm going to call that, th that thing uh, integer. I'm going to say mark. And in here, I'm going to say the other one was integer student number. Student number. OK? What, do you, need to, do you want to add anything else to this thing? You want to add the name of the student to this? We could, right? And now we know that we can hold the name of a person in a string, right? We know that. So in here, I'm going to say character uh, name. How long a name can be? Give me a number. 40. So what should be the size of the array? 41. Good. So name 41. There you go. That's my student. Mark, student number, name. Now how do I access this thing? I'm going to say, if you want to, to talk about a person with what it belongs, what belongs to, like Fardad's microphone, Fardad's head. Vardad's I. We put apostrophe S, right? Correct? In C language, dot is the apostrophe. Okay? First, I have to create an instance of that student mark. How do you create an instance of it? You repeat the name. Struct mark. You see that? You simply say struct student mark S. So S is now a variable. That variable has three pieces. It has a mark. It has a student number and a character array in it. If I want to access the mark, I have to say s.mark is set to 45. If I want to access the student number, I have to say s.student number is set to 1231231123. If I want to uh, access the name, I can say scanf percent s and put it in S's name. OK? Remember, you cannot say, remember about the other day? Can I do this? Because? It's an array. It's done. It's 41 things. I cannot use an assignment. Assignment is only for one thing. Thank you, Adam. OK? Assignment is only for one thing. You cannot set 41 things with one assignment. That has a function. You're going to learn how to copy. It's called STR copy. It's a function. You can actually use it. So just to show you what it means, if I wanted to, instead of, cop instead of doing that, I could actually say over here, SDR copy into S dot name, the name Fardad. It's actually a function. Now you know what the functions are. And then in here you have to say include string header file. Okay? Now you know. Okay? You're going to learn this at the end of the semester. So I'm just letting you know. Okay? So it's a function. You can actually get the Fardad, puts it in there. You cannot put an assignment. You have to call functions. Okay? So to access the pieces of, uh, of a structure, you access using the dot. OK? That's a positive. So if I want this fardad, I want to make it sardad. I want to change that f to an s. How do I access the first element of name? I can say s dot name 0 
S. Now the guy's name is Sardat. Oh, no, no, not that S. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. That S. Are we okay with this? Are we okay with accessing? Oh, I th somebody's talking outside. I thought somebody said, why are you calling that S? <laughs> okay. All right. So are we okay with this? It's just syntax of a structure. A structure is a variable. It works exactly like a variable. So if you can pass a variable to a function, you can pass a structure to a function. It doesn't make any difference. It's a package. It's a custom-made type. It's a type you created. The name of the type is struct student mark. And you can create an instance out of it. So as I could pass one element into an array using a function, using a, an argument, I can pass a student mark as an argument. Even better, I was returning one integer out using get int, right? You can return a student mark out. Package, it's one entity, right? You can, but that entity has three things in it. So we are tricking it. You can do that, actually. All right? Also, so yeah, so if I go back to that analysis of mine, and I want to change that, I'm going to, uh, let's save this. Zero to struct intro dot C. OK, so that's that one. So if I want to have this, I'm going to copy that only, uh, bring up the program again. Now, <clears throat> so what, I, what I'm going to have is this. So I'm adding the structure right up here. Let's have all those includes and defines and uh, prototypes up there, kind of get organized, put the defines at the same place. Okay. Now I have a student mark. Instead of having two parallel arrays, I'll create one array. I'm going to say struct, struct, student mark. And I'm going to create st100. So I'm going to have 100 students. Instead of having, instead of having uh, parallel arrays for it. Now, you see this int passed, int failed, int uh, so int just passed. These three things. I know I'm not going to make an array out of it, but they look like it looks like that they are kind of related to each other, aren't they? What are those three things? What can you call them? Results or uh, analysis result, passing, passing rate, passing rate, right? So I can create a structure called passing rate. So I'm going to say struct passing rate. And in here, I'm going to put these three things. It's not because I want to create an array or something. It's just because they go together. It's good to be in one package because usually when you want to see the passing rate, you need all these three information all at once, right? You never have only the passing or only the failing. You have them all together. So now in here I can say I can create a struct passing rate. And I'm just going to call it rate. So rate dot passed, rate dot failed, rate just just passed. Are we okay with that? Now let's reorganize our code in that way. Number of marks, let it be. Now in here we are setting pass, just pass, fail, and all, all those stuff to, to zero values, right? You can do that right over here. You can say equal to exactly like an array. You have three integers over there. Put three integers over here. Zero, zero, and zero. There you go. It's all initialized to zero, so I don't need to have it over here. Now, student number, so, so I have student number and then counter, I'm getting the value. So instead of getting a student number, I have to say st dot 
So SD counter dot student number. So instead of having parallel arrays, I'm going to say student number one, z, apostrophe s, student number one's student number, student number two's student number. OK? The mark of the student. In here, I'm going to say, um, how do I write it? So I'm going to write over here st. So I'm going to remove the marks. st counter dot mark of that student. And it's going to get the mark. And I'm going to add that one to the sum. OK? Now, this if statement over here, what does it do? Can anybody tell me? What does this if, if statement do? It, yeah, it just adds to rating. I don't know what you call that thing. Analysis? Parse? Nah, parsing is different. Huh? Standings? Standings, OK. So let's first trans translate it. So just passed will be ex as, as essentially rate dot just passed. And pass will be rate dot passed. And failed will be rate dot failed, right? And marks counter is going to be students, student counter dot mark. Dot mark. All right. Now, what do we have down here? We are printing the the row. So again, it's student counter dot student number and student counter dot mark. And at the end, we have rate dot past, rate dot just past, rate dot past, rate dot just past. Thank you very much. And then rate dot failed, rate dot just past. And we're almost done. All right. Now, oh, and we have ST counter mark and ST counter dot mark. So that's the only thing that we change. The structure is exactly the same, the structure of the program. The only difference is that now it's more organized with respect to number of, uh, with, re with respect to packaging the structure. And also what I can do over here, while we're going to go for break, is actually adding the, uh, the mark of the student, OK? Uh, the name of the student, OK? So when we are dealing with the student, actually not on a break, let's do it right now. This is easy. In here, what are we doing? We are getting the student information, right? We are getting a student information, correct? So I can actually have, in, analysis of, uh, in analyzer functions, I can actually have, now for that structure, I have to bring it back over here. So it has to know that the structure exists. So any place, again, structures are like prototypes. If you want to reuse them, you have to put them in a header file. Otherwise, you have to repeat them. So this analyzer that we have over here, I'm going to put uh, that one over here in this uh, function so I have access to it. Later on, we're going to put it in a, uh, in a function so we can see in a, in a header file so we can have it. 
accessible everywhere, but let's write the function. So I want a function that gets the student, correct? Gets student information. So I'm going to say return a, struct, a structure of type student mark. Call it get student or get student info. Get, get student mark. And I do not need to pass anything to it because it's going to get it from the user, right? It's exactly like get int. But instead of getting one integer, I'm getting one student. So if I look at the code for, if I look at the code for the for get int or get valid int, that's exactly what I'm doing. You see, it's receiving one integer, returning one integer. Exactly like that. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually create a struct student mark. Let's call it std. OK, so I have a student, right? Now I'm going to get the marks over here, exactly as I did in my program. So I'm going to come up over here and just copy that code. So I want a student number and a student mark, right? So I'm going to say printf. Let's start with name. Name. Now in here, I'm going to say uh, scanf percent %s student.name. Remember, name is not a single entity. That's why it doesn't have ampersand beside it. It's an array. Array is address by nature. Okay, it's not one thing, it's 50 things somewhere in memory. That's why you don't put an ampersand. So I got the name. Now I'm going to say printf, uh, student number. Number. Now I want to get the student number, right? I already have the function for it in utilities. So up here I will include it. I'm going to say include utilities.h and I'm going to say student dot student number will be set equal to get int the value that we had get sorry get valid int and I'm going to put the value minimum was 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and maximum one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm going to say printf uh, student mark. And I'm going to say std.mark will be set to get valid int between 0 and 100. And now that it's all done, I'm going to say return student. So my function is receiving a student and returning it, one entity. But inside that student, there are many details. So now in here, instead of writing this messy code of enter this and that and that and so on and so forth, all I need to do is to just write a entry number. So I'm going to say entry number percent d and I go to new line and then I remove all the details of entry and simply say student counter is equal to get student get student mark and that's it uh, I have to have the header file. See, the functions are being added, so I need to put those things in a header file. First, I'm going to test it, and then I'm going to put it in a header file. So now I'm going to put it right under title. You see these three things? Title, get student mark, and structure student mark, these three things. They are all related, and this one actually, passing rate, these are all related to analysis, right? So it has to be in a header file so it can be added anywhere we want. 
we can do that. But for now, let's 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 get it like this. Now take a look, see what's the how is, how is it different. Instead of having all that several lines of code, I am having I have a counter up to number of marks. Enter a number. I show what is the number. Then I'm going to say student counter student whatever is set to get student mark done. And the details of student getting student mark is in another function. That's something that I did separate. So that's how a program actually is written by 50 different people. The person who knows analysis best sits over there and uses its imagination, writes a code with imaginary functions. Wish list. Then it gives the list of the functions. Jack, you write this. Jane, you write that. John, you write this. They all start with J. Okay? So, so different people can write different pieces of code, and they write it the best way they can. And then I get the content of those, put it in a separate function, sap separate file, and I run the program and I test it. Are we okay with this? All right. So I'm going to polish this thing. We can go for it. Yes? Link together? You're using it. Okay. First of all, in here, because it's in a solution one and a two and three, it knows these three functions are there, files are there. And when you are compiling this on, on, uh, on matrix, you have to go GCC, um, name analyze, why did I call that thing so, right, so long? Analyze functs dot, I should have called it analyze dot C, functs dot C, uh, uh, PRG dot C, and U utilities.c dash o uh, my program and you enter so the compiler knows it has to first compile this one then compile this one then compile this one after they are all compiled check to see all the functions are available if they are if they link them into a executable called my prg and my prg will run the program are we okay with this all right so that's functions and structures. I'm just going to complete that. Let's go for a break and come back. And I'm going to uh, make it look better. I'm going to complete it with many more functions. And we'll see how it's going to work. OK, let's uh, save this. I'm Review. We said that we can package all our information that are relative into structures. And instead of having several parallel arrays, and some of them that we couldn't, we couldn't even do, like names were already array, right? You couldn't have an array of arrays. We don't know how to do that yet. So what we can do, we can actually create a structure, a package. And we can put all this stuff in that package and then create an array of that package. And everything goes nice and organized. A structure is created like this. So you put struct, the name of the structure, the title of that package, and all the little pieces that you wanted to have that package to have. You close the curly bracket and semicolon. Structures are usually in header files because they have to be accessible everywhere. We're going to do that now. You don't always have to have structures to create and to, uh, 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 to uh, eliminate parallel arrays. Sometimes you just have structures to make things organized, like that one. The rates that we had pass, fail, and just pass. We had th three different rates. We put them all in one package, and we call it passing rate. And that passing rate will carry all the three things as we want it. Because this analyzer program of ours now has uh, three different pieces, I'm going to actually rename the files and make them uh, look um, better and organized. So we had over here analyzer functions, and we had analyzer C like that. Um, let, let, I just want to put uh, simpler names for it. So probably I'm going to create a new solution inside this solution. Can I do that? Or side by side? I can actually do something else. I'm going to 
create a new solution. <clears throat> Browse in Seneca section H zero eight. So this becomes zero nine. June 12th. So in here I'm going to create, <clears throat> first of all, I'm going to bring utilities, utilities.h, program, analyzer.c. These are the things that we had. I'm going to copy these and bring them into the new one. Paste. Okay, now I'm going to close the old solution that we had and continue over here but with proper names. Oops, I had things that I saved and I copied it before that. So save yes. Now I'm going to have to recopy it again. So it's utilities, program, and analysis functions. Copy. Back in here. Paste, replace. All right. So this analyzer functions. I'm going to call it analyzer.c. This one I'm going to call it analyzer app.c, that's the application. Then I have utilities and I have the header file. Okay? And I'm going to add those things, all of them. If you go to the uh, project name and you go add existing items, it automatically puts everything in its place. So if I go add, it puts the header file in header files and source file in source files. Now I'm going to add one more file over here. And I'm going to call that analyzer.h. And in that header file, I'm going to put the common values that are needed to write the analyzer program. So uh, the structure, I think it was in the analyzer app. There you go. So passing rate, student mark structure, title, these are all the stuff. The defined values, those are the things, minimum mark, maximum mark. I'm going to take all those and put it in the header file, okay? And go to Analyzer app. Instead, say include analyzer.h. Now I can go into analyzer.c instead of having the title and stuff, sorry, having the student marks added, I can say include analyzer.h, and now the defined statements are here too, so now what I can do, I can actually put over here minimum mark and maximum mark. Okay, so in analyzer.h, In analyzer.h, as you see, I have title, student mark, the structure, and a passing rate. In here, I have the title, student get student marks, and, stru and uh, uh, structure and a passing rate will be included over here too. Now I can actually write, up pro uh, write more function using all the things that are shared between the, the application and its functions. So. Let's go to the application again. In here, what do you call this thing? You call this what? The changing the, the setting the values of the analy and analyze stuff. Analyze. 
Standings? Standings. OK. Set standings or, yeah, set standings. Does that make sense? If it doesn't blame him, easy. OK. All right. So for set standings, that's a tough one. Because I have to, I, for standings, I have to modify already existing passing rates, correct? And I know in functions I can't. In functions, everything is a copy. I can't do that. The only way to do this is like this. If I want to make the cell phone change, and I can't, and I cannot tell where it is to that gentleman over there, Afshin, if I correct, is that right? Yes. Okay. I can give my cell phone to him, and I'm going to say, break it, and then give it back to me. Correct? So I can give to Afshin my cell phone. He gets my cell phone with all this stuff or fix it. He's going to fix it and give it back to me, right? So I am not to modify it. I can actually give it to him and then ask him to modify and get it back. So the function that I can write for, I'm going to call it set stats or set standings. So I'm going to call it, so it has to return a passing rate for me. So I'm going to say struct passing rate. <clears throat> what was the name again? Set standings? Or update? See, if it's standings, then I have to call this standings. Because I'm saying update standings, and I'm then updating pa update passing rates. That's better. Passing rates, right? Then I'm going to pass the passing rate to it, modify it, and returning out. So I'm going to say struct passing rates. Let's call it PR. And then I'm going to pass the mark, because depending on the mark, I have to change the passing rates, right? So I'm going to say over here, int mark. All right. So what was the function? What was the functionality? It was this if statement, right? I'm just gonna copy that and paste it right over here. You see that? So in here now I'm gonna fix it. So this rate is actually PR is not rate, correct? And this one is PR. It's the passing rate that is coming in, correct? PR. And this ST mark is actually, somebody's whispering back there, don't. Don't. OK. And then mark. I'm going to bring, oops. OK. And this one's going to be mark 2. And at the end, I'm going to say return PR. Correct? So what did I do? I am passing the passing rates to it. And the mark, depending on the mark, it's going to modify the value, corresponding value in the passing rate, and then return it back. Correct? Now, in my code in here, what I'm going to do, where I actually remove that, I'm going to say, Rate, that was the name of the thing, right? Is set to update. Oh, I have to put this, uh, I have to put this prototype inside the header file in analyzer.h, so that's going to be the header file for it. So, it. so it knows it's there. There you go. Save everything. Let's come back over here. So I'm going to say rate will set to update. Passing rates. Then in here, I'm going to say pass the rate again and the student mark. Look at the loop. Remember that gigantic loop? Now read through it as if you don't know what's happening inside 
the functions. And let's see what happens. I am saying for counter zero, counter less than number of marks, counter plus plus, which means I am counting and going through it. Print entry number. So I'm going to get an entry. The student counter get student marks. So I'll get the student marks and put it in a student. Add the mark of the students to the sum. Correct? Update the passing rates with the student mark and put it back in rate. Done. So as you see, the program by itself becomes the comment of the program if you choose the proper names for the functions. If you choose proper name for functions, you, don't, you will know that this updates the passing rate, and this is the rate, right? So it's being updated. How? I don't know yet. I know just got to be updated. That's procrastination in coding, which is beautiful. The only time that it's good to procrastinate is when you code. While you code, as soon as you get to a place, you say, I don't know what to do, make a function immediately. Write a function, use your imagination. You know what data is need, needs to be modified. You don't know how. Pseudocode. It's not a pseudocode, actually. It's code. But so, yeah, so what you do, you create an imaginary function, you put it over there, you add the prototype for it, you write your code, and then you say, oh, now I've written the code, let me see how can I fix this freaking problem. You go open that function and only think about that function and nothing else. Now down here. Again, I have a counter over here, I'm printing a row, right? So. Now, I am going through the student marks one by one, and I am printing it. Yeah, so this is actually printing a single row. Is that correct? Based on the information for the student. Of course, now I have student names too. I can actually add the name. So I'm going to have a row in here. I'm going to add a name. Name. That's going to be tough. So let's, uh, um, I'm going to add. Um, what do I do? I'm going to add two bar. Uh, one bar was need enough. OK. So one bar I'm going to add. Now in here, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I lost it. Finished. <laughs> Around 41, 40 thing. And in here, I'm going to go name. OK. So that's 40, 40 characters for the name. What is the, uh, this is 16, that's 57. So here is 57, 8 and 9, this should be fine, okay? And now in here I'm going to put the row and then put over here percent. 41 s so that's 41 characters for the s and you want the you want the names to be left justified right so put a dash beside it okay and now you can put over here student counter dot name down the name is printed too not only that, what is this? Let me just take this uh, like that. What is this line doing? This, this big thing over here, what is this? What is the purpose of this, this line? Can anybody tell me this piece of thing that I have, code over here? What does it do? Can anybody tell me? Please? Yes, but specifically, analyze it. <clears throat> no, no, no. <clears throat> what I mean is that it, it is part of printing, but what is it printing? <laughs> yes, don't go philosophical for me. I know it prints the essence of the user. I know, but not that. What does it do? Which part of report, which part of the printing this part is responsible to, for? 
Yeah, yeah, but how? Oh, God. It prints a single row of data. And that's why it's being repeated, right? So essentially, this prints one row. Correct? That's the title at the top. One row, one row keeps going like that. And then it's the bottom of the thing, correct? Right? So this is essentially it's printing the data row, right? Or row. Analysis row. Or what do you call that thing? What do you call a row of data? Array? Uh, um, matrix reloaded. Uh, <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> this we have to name something standings here today. <laughs> so I'm gonna call that student row or report row. Student report row. Ugh, yuck, but hey. So student <coughs> print student report row. Okay? Print student report. Whenever you don't know what to write, just write a big name. It's going to fix it. OK? Print student report row. And what do I need to have to print the student report row? What is it? What is it? What are the data that's needed over here to print that row? One single student, correct? One single student. <clears throat> it has a standing standing thingy by itself. We don't need to care about that. It's printing the standing. Um, what else? So I have the student. So this is all student dependent, student dependent, student dependent, student dependent. Stu oh, what is this? The row, right? Beautiful. So these are the things I need. To print a student report row, I need row number. And a student, which essentially that row number will be counter plus one, right? <clears throat> so that's my function. So I have to write a function that receives the row and a student and prints it. How do I do that? Again. What is copy and paste good for? That's it. So I remove that one. That becomes my program. Now I'll come, I'll come over here. Uh, so in this, in this place that I have to write the function, so I'm going to write over here. For now, I'm just going to say he, who, whatever, and, and write the code in here. I don't want to do anything with it yet. I'll come back over here and copy the function name because I'm lazy. I don't want to type over it. I'm just going to copy that, and I'm going to come back over here and print that. It does not need to return anything, so it's a void. Counter plus one is the row, so I'm going to call it int row, correct? So I remove this counter plus one, and I put row instead, not re, row. And for this one, I have to pass a struct student mark, what was the name of the structure? Anybody remembers? Student mark. Student mark. And I'm going to call it ST because I don't want to do too much typing. I just want to remove this and it works. See? There you go. And this one. And this one. And this one. One more. And this one. I think I have myself a function. So print student report row. It gets the row, gets the mark, prints all this stuff out, right? Looks OK to me. And it's used over there. Now I have to add the prototype to the header file. Copy. And I'll go back over here. Where is it? Uh, header file is here. Paste. I have one more function. And save. I come back over here. And I have the row. This is too big, too. Right? This has to change. 
What is this 31 dashes? That's under the, I think that's finishing the report, right? Anyways, so it looks good. Uh, I don't see anything wrong with it. Counter, that's show, that's prints the title. So that's too long. You see, that's too long of a thing. Why that thing has to be in a, in a, like that's, that's ugly and long, right? Although, it, like, I, I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna say over here, um, report, report, type, uh, report um, title. That's it. It doesn't need to get anything or put anything, so I'll put that one over here. Void, report, report. That's a new version of report. And everybody's politely quiet. <laughs> report title. So that's void two. It's still, no. No, it's not. It's report. Okay, let me get rid of these tag. This thing. I think that's, that's better. So there we go. Now I'm going to put the, that's going to be the title. Save it. I need to put that one in a header file. It goes in the header file. So the program is actually, it looks, it, it's getting look like, it, it becomes like a professional type of, it looks like somebody who knew what, what they're doing actually is writing it. It's not, it's not like a, a rookie type of thing anymore. Um, of course, we're going to learn how to put all these things in one thing. Total number of student pass, yada, yada, yada. So we're going we're gonna to talk about that later. Let's try this quickly and see what it, how it works. Um, just mm, bravely, I'm going to compile it and hope that it's going to do something. So enter number of analysis. I hope I can do three. Yes, entry number one name is Fardad. Uh, student number one, two, three. Did I put, oh gosh, I've done two, three, one, two, three. And my mark is 56. Uh, Fred, student number uh, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. Um, the mark is, and Frank is going to be, my brain only works with the thing I have to, otherwise I get confused. Oh, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> See? Okay, I put it in, and I hit, so it, it, it doesn't look bad. I just forgot to make that thing, like, you see, it actually works. So, so. As you see, it's, um, look, it, I, I just have to make this thing a little longer, um, and the other one too, so that's uh, like 40 characters longer. So <clears throat> now, um, what else do I have here? <clears throat> I have six more minutes. Let me think. Pardon me? Let me pause recording. So let's just, <clears throat> and this is <clears throat> 31. Um, let's start one thing. Nah, then that's too much. I think this is enough, because you have a test coming next week, right? So that's, that's all it's going to be. I'm not going to be, I'm going to teach, not, not, I'm not going to teach more than this, OK? So. Down to this point, whatever you see down to this point is going to be on the test, OK? Right from the, and it's going to be an hour test. Um, I don't know what the format's going to be, uh, but it's not going to be that, that long. And the day that you're coming, we're going to continue this. <clears throat> and I'm going to put this thing in front of me and make your test one out of this, OK? So you study this to be able to pass the test. I'm giving you the same thing, incentive that I gave you with the quiz with three marks. Remember that? That's you have to. So I'm going to actually look, not, not this one, but uh, I'll go through the notes that I have. And I'm going to try to get the hints out of that one. Um, you should be OK. <laughs> Any questions? Any questions? Yes. Yeah, why do you keep saying that? OK, let me. Anybody has any question? I want to stop the recording now. Other than did I post the recording or not? Give me two seconds.